Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 7th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan has a good reminder today that the first mention of the term computer virus in an academic paper happened about 40 years ago. The paper was published in February of 1984 and the title was Computer Viruses, Theory and Experiments. It does outline the basic uh, form of a computer virus. Now, the way a computer virus is really defined in this uh, paper is as something that infects executables. And a lot of uh, the early uh, malware really acted that way, where it sort of appended itself to existing executables on a system. And then whenever that normally benign executable was executed, the malicious code was executed as well. This type of computer virus has become more rare these days, not really seen that much anymore. But the term computer virus, as Jan points out, has really been used sometimes to just describe a malware. And just to show what malware or viruses look like these days, an article in Argauer Zeitung, which is a Swiss newspaper, is talking about an army of infected toothbrushes that apparently did hit a company in Switzerland. The data appears to come from Fortinet, but I couldn't find an original article uh, at Fortinet, some blog post or so, talking about this. A link to a copy of the story at Tom's Hardware, which first of all is in English, and also the original uh, newspaper is behind a paywall. But apparently what happened was that for unknown reasons, uh, these toothbrushes which uh, run Java got infected and were abused as a simple uh, DDoS botnet where all of these toothbrushes were asked to request a particular website of a Swiss company. Having 3 million infected toothbrushes at their disposal, of course, the attackers were successful in shutting down the affected website for some time, causing apparently substantial damage. So there are some missing details here, not 100% sure how accurate the reporting is, but this is in line which, with what we sort of have seen from Internet of Things style attacks and certainly very plausible. And JetBrain published a critical update for its Team City product. Team City allows teams to collaborate on creating software. So one of these typical supply chain style vulnerabilities, an unauthenticated attacker with HTTPS access to Team City can bypass authentication and gain administrative control over the Team City server. Patches have been released, and if you are running Team City on premises, then you must update quickly. The fixed version is 2023.11.3, and the CVE number is 2024. 23917. And then we have two stories that are loosely related in that they both affect job seekers. The first one is a report by Group IB about what they're calling resume looters. This resume looters group is a attempting to break into various job websites. These are websites that companies are running and such to collect resumes from applicants. And the attacker is apparently targeting these resumes to steal them. Now, the report, as far as I've seen, didn't sort of clearly indicate why they're stealing them. They're targeting sites in the Asia Pacific region. Like I said, a little bit unrelated, but still uh, going after job seekers. And this may be a little bit also telling us more about how data may be used is a report by Spider Labs. That's part of Trustwave about advertising that is spreading uh, malware. The advertising is again targeting job seekers. 
One way it's spreading is also by impersonating personalities like, for example, Amazon's CEO Andy Jesse and the, the link then in the advertisement links to a PDF that is then being used to install the malicious file. Virus total uh, recognition here, again, pretty low of the malware, only three hits according to Trustwave when they investigated the malware initially. Now, the goal of this malware appears to be to steal crypto coin data. Of course, targeting developers and such, and that's sort of the kind of job seekers that they're going after here. These is a population that's more likely to play and own crypto coins. So that's maybe why they're going after this particular group of individuals, because there's just a higher chance of actually finding a crypto coin wallet on their systems. Well, that's it for today. And well, if there's sort of a theme over the last few years or so of uh, this podcast, it is that vulnerabilities in web applications keep coming up. If you need to protect a network, you need to understand web applications and related vulnerabilities. If you want to learn more of this, well, uh, check out my Defending Web Applications class. We'll be teaching it in Orlando and in London, England over the next few months. So take a look and hope to see some of you there. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.